Happy Wednesday, everyone. Sam Tenpenny with Tri-State Livestock News, The Fence Post, and Farmer and Rancher Exchange with your daily headlines concerning fair cattle markets. U.S. Department of Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack announced last Friday an adjustment in school meal reimbursements to help schools to continue to serve children both healthy and nutritious meals. This move would put an estimated $750 million more into school meal program costs across the nation, making sure that federal reimbursements kept pace with food and operational costs while ensuring that children continue to receive healthy meals at school. School lunch reimbursement rates usually don't increase during the school year. However, this year, due to the pandemic, USDA allowed schools to benefit from the highest rates available, which are normally reserved for the USDA Summer Food Service Program. By law, these summer rates adjust for inflation annually in January. This adjustment is well-timed to ensure that the purchasing power of schools keeps pace with the cost of living. Schools receiving these reimbursement rates can stretch their operating budgets further during these tough times while giving families fewer meal expenses to worry about each school day. At the start of the 2021-2022 school year, the SFSP lunch reimbursement rate for participating schools was already 15% higher than the standard reimbursement for a free lunch. Now, because of higher food costs and other circumstances, schools will receive an additional 25 cents per lunch. Taken together, schools are receiving 22% more for school lunches than they would under normal conditions. This action is part of USDA and the Biden-Harris administration's joint effort to ensure that school meal programs are strong and have the assistance they need to navigate current challenges. According to USDA, the Biden-Harris administration is working to place greater focus on more resilient local and regional food production, fair markets for all producers, ensuring access to safe, healthy, and nutritious food in all communities, building new markets and streams of income for farmers and producers that are using climate smart food and forestry practices, making historic investments in infrastructure and clean energy capabilities in rural America, and committing to equity across the department by removing systematic barriers and building a workforce more representative of America. A week ago Monday, the Biden-Harris administration announced their action plan for a fair, more competitive, and more resilient meat and poultry supply chain. According to RCAP USA, the plan includes massive amounts of government funding intended to slowly rebuild the now dismantled competitive marketing channels for cattle and beef, which has created what the administration calls a bottleneck in the nation's food supply chain. RCAP CEO Bill Bullard said the funding announced in the plan should help increase both the number of marketing channels for America's cattle farmers and ranchers, as well as distribution channels for America's consumers. We recognize that this level of government involvement is unprecedented and that it's critical for reversing the decades of inattention, neglect, and denial that facilitated the elimination of competition in our U.S. cattle industry, he said. But Bullard said his group remains skeptical about the plan's strategy for addressing decades of non-enforcement of U.S. antitrust laws and the 100-year-old Packers and Stockyards Act. He said his organization waited for years, and by 2019, it was clear that the government was disinclined to protect the cattle industry from alleged Packer buying practices that RCAP alleged were harming America's cattle producers in the group's private antitrust lawsuit filed against the largest Packers in April of that year. Bullard concluded, our nation's cattle industry is in a serious crisis, and while we appreciate the administration's plans to write rules with which to implement portions of the Packers and Stockyards Act, correct the exploitive product of USA beef label, and increase market transparency by requiring more information, as well as its attempt to identify any new potential violations of competition laws, the fact remains that the administration has not announced that it will take any decisive enforcement action to protect American cattle farmers from the harms they've been experiencing for the past seven years and we remain disappointed with that omission. Drovers reported the Biden administration's billion-dollar action plan unveiled last Monday to aid farmers, ranchers, and consumers, but do none of the above, according to the North American Meat Institute. The Meat Institute's president, CEO, Juliana Pott, said the Biden administration continues to ignore the number one challenge to meat and poultry production being labor shortages. According to Potts, for the third time in six months, President Joe Biden and his administration announced the same plans to spend $1 billion to fund government intervention in the market in an attempt to increase prices that livestock producers receive while blaming inflation on the private industry. She also said the Biden administration has refused to engage with the packing and processing sector they attack, going so far as to hold a roundtable on meat packing without a single beef or pork processor present, and that press conferences and using taxpayer dollars to establish government-sponsored packing and processing plants will not do anything to address the lack of labor at meat and poultry plants and spiking inflation across the country. Potts said the administration wants the American people to believe that the meat and poultry industry is unique, as that they're not experiencing the same problems causing inflation across our entire economy, such as increased input costs, increased energy costs, 
labor shortages and transportation challenges. She also noted the cattle producers are currently seeing higher prices only because packers have processed the backlog of animals that had been in their system. The Meat Institute says that Biden's new action plan raises several questions, including how much extra packing plant capacity does the administration think is needed? How high should cattle prices be right now? How long will the government sponsored processors receive government money? How much money will the government processors be required to pay their employees? There are many small and medium-sized packers in the market today that have never received government support. How will they be affected by the influx of government-sponsored competition? When will these new plants come online? 2024, 2025? What impact will they have now? Where are the target areas these plants are needed? Will the new plants have sufficient labor? The meat industry says the White House believes industry structure is keeping cattle prices low, conveniently ignoring the fact that the beef industry has changed very little over 30 years and that prices reflect supply and demand in a healthy market. According to ABC, JBS Brazil has finalized a deal to buy the leading Australian pork processing company known as Rivoli. The deal was opposed by farmers concerned about a loss of competition, but has been approved by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission and the Foreign Investment Review Board, giving JBS control of three of the four export pork abattoirs in southern Australia. Smaller pork producers said that deal could make it harder for them to get their livestock processed at the Diamond Valley pork plant, which Rivoli is a majority shareholder of. The ACCC, however, felt that it was unlikely that JBS would profit from that and ultimately raised no objections to the proposal. JBS declined to comment on the sale, but in a statement said that it would continue to provide kill services at Diamond Valley Pork for current customers and also grow that customer base. Reuters reported that world food prices jumped 28% in 2021 to their highest level in a decade and that hopes for a return to a more stable market condition this year is looking slim. The Food and Agriculture Organization's Food Price Index, which tracks the most globally traded food commodities, averaged 125.7 points in 2021, the highest since 131.9 back in 2011. The monthly index eased slightly in December, but had climbed for the previous four months in a row, reflecting harvest setbacks and strong demand over the past year. Higher food prices have contributed to a broader surge in inflation as economies recover from the coronavirus crisis, and the FAO has warned that higher costs are putting poorer populations at risk in countries that are more reliant on imports. In its latest update, the food agency was cautious about whether price pressures might abate this year, as a surge in the price of fertilizers linked in turn to spiraling energy prices has ramped up the cost of so-called inputs used by farmers to produce crops, raising doubts over yield prospects for next year's harvests. That's all for today. Tune in next time for all things fair cattle markets.